But now we have discovered that quantile regression fits the data even better. Uh, and perhaps that's not the best way to explain it. Essentially, it's it's a richer model to fit the data. That's that's how I want to characterize it. And then I'll hand it over to Plan C to actually show his work and move on from there. Okay, so, uh, oh, yeah. So you should now be able to see my my chart. <clears throat> I will quickly mention that most regression models that people run on um, that people run on Bitcoin data are typically OLS models. OLS is really good, efficient. It it does a great job. Uh, creating a line that goes directly through through your data. And if you've done your job right, you can capture some interesting trends in your data. But the challenge that it has is it assumes uh, something that uh, in technical terms, they call it homoscedasticity, which means that distribution of the variable you're trying to model doesn't change over time. Okay, but is that true for Bitcoin? In this chart, what I'm trying to show is that the uh, this is a chart of just one metric that I've randomly pulled, uh, the MVRV over time. And you can all see that MVRV uh, in the first cycle goes all the way up to eight, close to eight. Second cycle only can get up to six. Third cycle, only five. N next four, next three. And it probably is going to go down. So what is this telling us? This tells us the volatility of Bitcoin is going down. This tells us the variance. Everything that I said OLS assumes is now becomes wrong because the market structure changes every cycle is different and that's what you know has you know tripped up many analysts and uh, using the models that have restrictive assumptions so what it so if the bitcoin's distribution changes and we can actually confirm that uh here as well in this chart i'm looking at just the volatility of bitcoin essentially the change in percentage change in price over time now you can clearly see here that Volatility has been going down. You know, a lot of people have opinions about uh, volatility is not going down, but uh, data doesn't agree with that. So volatility is going down, and that also means the variance is going down. The distribution is changing. So OLS is not the. Uh, it's pretty good, but not the best model you can use. So today we're gonna we're gonna use a quantile regression, which uh, just to introduce it a little bit, if you run a basic OLS regression model you are trying to find a line that goes through the middle of the data and try to find the average but uh you can think of in think in terms of quantiles so 75th percentile as you see here or 25th percentile or even you can go to the extremes uh look at 99th or one percentile all those and median and actually these things are a lot a little bit more resilient to outliers because outliers don't really change uh quantiles at all and uh, as i said in an ols model you're assuming that there is always a distribution of values around the average line but that distribution is assumed to be stable which is not the case in bitcoin as as i explained so quantile regression essentially if you look at these green and red what it tries to do it gives more weight <clears throat> it gives more weight to uh, some of the quantiles and um uh, uh, what Plan C is going to show is that we are trying to capture the highest quantile and then the lowest quantile to give us a beautiful channel of price growth. So what it does, it, it just gives more weight to those points, but also still including all the points. So it's not like somebody is just connecting the top dots or bottom dots. It's actually using all the data, but it tries to model more accurately what's happening at the edges of the channel. Okay, so with that uh, basics. I want to hand it over to Plan C uh, uh, to share his his work. So if you want to, you sh you should oh. be able to pre uh, click present and share your you screen. Oh, okay. Um, the chart is uh, it's in the Telegram group. Do you mind pulling it up? Just the last one. It's also the one I posted most recently on X. So I just if I do it on my end, I think it'll be more clunky. But I can I can start talking about it as you're finding the chart. So. Yeah, I mean, Asin explained extremely well. He has a very strong background uh, in data analysis uh, academically. And so, um, yeah, as, essentially, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, either of you guys, uh, with anything I'm saying here, because I, I care more just about getting the information across correctly. But uh, I, I, my understanding with uh, quantile regressions is essentially looking at like a cumulative distribution of probabilities, right? Uh, I believe that's that's uh, one way to describe it. And so, yeah, the, the goal is to kind of, uh, for me, 
is to create um, a channel that can best because because a lot of people give will, will give like a single target. Okay, I have a model like this. You know, this is the kind of clickbait stuff you're going to see on X. Is like, okay, I got a model, and my model says we're going to this price. Well, nothing like it's all based on probabilities, right? And so the the way I, uh, uh, the reason why I like quantile regressions is because we're essentially looking at a cumulative distribution of probabilities, and so. Um, we can all we can say is essentially look last cycle we got to this quantile the cycle before we got to this quantile the cycle before we got to this quantile if we get to this quantile again this will be the price if we get there at this time so this is a this is a zoomed out chart and this is the 99.9 uh, uh, quantile right and so um this is the absolute extreme of the tops and bottoms, right? So this is not saying we're going to get to three, uh, 333, uh, sorry, 343,000. That's not what this chart is saying. Um, that's It's saying if we got to the uh, most extreme quantile, right, the, 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 the absolute highest, um, you know, uh, deviation, you could say, or, or not deviation, the, the, high, the most extreme of the data set, right, the cumulative distribution of probabilities, if we got to the absolute most extreme and we reached there, at the very end of, of next year, it, the price of would be three hundred and forty three thousand, right? And so, um, it depends when we reach, right? If we reach mid next year, that would be a different number. So this is the zoomed out version. What I'm working on right now is a is a way more detailed version. I didn't have it ready for today, but I'm going to have it ready in the next day or two. It's it's a zoomed in version that is breaking down by the quarters. So starting in uh, uh, Q1 of next year, I'm doing Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 of next year. And I'm actually including 2026 Q1 and then 2026 Q2 um, because who knows, maybe the cycle extends another half year. We don't know, right? And then I'm going to break down the different quantiles. So if we reach the 99.9th quantile, these will be the prices depending on which quarter we reach. And then I'm going to do also the 90th quantile or sorry, 99th quantile, and then probably as down as low as maybe even 80 and 90 quantile, because we don't know, maybe we don't get all the way up uh, uh, again. But we did reach the 99.9 .9 in 2017 peak, and we did reach the 99.9 .9 in the... So, so take a step back, uh, explain what we're looking at. So what's the red line, what's the blue line, and what so, are the numbers? Yeah, so the 90, So when I say 99.9 .9 quantile, what, I, what I'm referring to is only 0.1% of all the data points. So this is this is hourly data for the entire history of Bitcoin. So this is the, the full data set back to the very beginning since we had access to any data, which is July 17th, 2010, right? So full data set, hourly data, 120,000, uh, over 20, 120,000 data points. So out of all those data points, the red line is based on only 10% of the data points, or sorry, not 10%, 0.1% of the data points are above that line. Right, so that's that's one in every thousand data points falls above that line. So it's the very extreme outliers to the to the um, the upside. Right during the bull run, these are these are the uh, you know by definition when you're in that extreme, uh, you you can essentially assess like okay when you get to that red line, like we're really in overheated territory because we've only ever been this this um, uh, had been this high zero point one percent of the data points, and it's the same on the other side, right? We're looking at, I believe the in this case, it's actually 1% of the data points fall below the blue line. Um, the version I'm creating is it's going to be 0.1%. But this is only 0.1% of the time did was are there any data points below that blue line and then 0.1% above, right? So only one in every 100 data points falls below the blue and only one in every 1,000 data points falls above the red. So when you when you get close to those lines, you can essentially say, wow, like based on the full distribution of probabilities, we've only ever been here such a very small amount of time. This should be an indication that that this is an extreme event, right? So you that's that's how I look at it. But but um, in, in for example, in uh, the last cycle, we got we got up to I believe it was. <clears throat> it, it looks like we didn't get um, quite as high. We got we actually got up to the ninety nine point fifth quantile, I believe, of the last cycle. So we actually got we actually got um quite high even though it on the chart there's a little bit of a gap there we we actually got up to 99.5 uh quantile i believe I'll, I'll double check that we definitely got over 99 so um in the previous two cycles 20 uh the the 2013 cycle we got to 99.9 .9 quantile 
2017, 99.9. And I believe last cycle it was either 99 or 99.5. So we can essentially, uh, we can look at that and say, okay, based on which quarter we reach the peak, right? Uh, each quarter I'm going to give a range. So I'm calling this the power law probability channel is what I'm ultimately going to call it. I think it's just a simple, instead of using the quantile jargon, regression jargon, pr uh, power law probability channel, I'm going to do a zoomed in version showing each quarter, you know, a range of, of prices, depending on what uh, quantile we reach and essentially probably starting at 80 all the way to 99.9. .9. So that's, that's what's coming, but that's the kind of stuff we're looking to create here is, is not necessarily tell you guys, this is exactly what we think we're going to get to for the price, but more, this is the data. You guys decide what you think we're going to get to, right?